Hello everyone, this is Dr. Vishal Tevedi from Department of Biosciences and Bioengineering IIT Guwahati and what we were discussing, we were discussing about the different uh, aspects of the molecular biology in the course, uh, in this particular course. So, so far what we have discussed, we have discussed about the cellular structures followed by we have discussed about the different types of biomolecules and then we have also discussed about the role of these biomolecules in some of the biological processes such as we have discussed about the cellular metabolism, we have discussed about the uh, apoptosis and death and we have also discussed about the autophagy and we have also discussed about the role of these biomolecules into the uh, cell division and other kind of aspects. Uh, following that we have also discussed about the central dogma of molecular biology and how these biomolecules are very crucial for regulating the different types of uh, uh, molecular processes. So, we have discussed about the replication, transcription and translation and uh, we have discussed the replication in uh, prokaryotes and eukaryotes and, and the other processes also in the both kind of species to give you a comparative study between what happens in the prokaryotic system and what happens in the eukaryotic system. Uh, following that we have also discussed about the some of the molecular techniques. So, we have discussed about the blotting technique in the previous module and uh, we have discussed about southern blotting, northern blotting and system blotting. In the current module we are discussing about the amplification technique. So, in that amplification technique we are discussing about the polymerase chain reactions and if you recall in the previous lecture we have discussed about the theoretical aspects of these the, the techniques. So, we have discussed how the technique is being evolved by taking the inspiration from the uh, from the DNA applications. So, as soon as the author Kornberg had discovered the enzymes for the DNA applications and the complete machinery for the DNA applications, people have started th uh, thinking about modulating the machinery so that it can be done in a better way and uh, that is how we have the uh, the scientists have developed the polymerase chain reactions where they are utilizing the different temperatures for uh, performing the different types of events. So, for example, in the initiation uh, you require the melting of the DNA and you also require the addition of the primers and so on and that all been achieved by uh, heating the DNA at 95 degrees Celsius for 10 minutes. So, that will be the denaturation steps. Following that they are actually going to lower down the temperature to annealing temperature so that you can actually the primers are actually going to go and bind and then they will enter into the elongation phase and there they are actually going to allow the DNA polymerase to go and sit onto the template and they are actually going to do the synthesis of the uh, uh, synthesis of the DNA. Uh, they have also discussed uh, that how the different types of components are required and what are the different types of precaution you should take, what is the advantage of the polymerase chain reactions and what is the uh, advantage of using the tag DNA polymerase versus the PFU polymerase and what are the different types of troubleshooting you can actually be able to do if you encounter the problem of no product or the uh, appearance of the non-specific products. Now, in today's lecture we are actually going to focus more on the technical aspect of the polymerase chain reaction. So, in the previous lecture we discussed about the theoretical aspects uh, how you can be able to do all that, but in the current lecture we are going to discuss about the technical aspects so that how you can be able to set up the PCRs, how you can be able to design the primers and so on. So, when we talk about the technical aspect the first thing what comes into the mind is what are the requirement of the polymerase chain reactions and how uh, you are going to set up the polymerase chain reactions. So, as far as the requirement is concerned you require the following reagents, you require the template DNA, you require the primers, you require the magnesium chloride and you require the DNTPs and at the end you also require the tag DNA polymerase. Uh, what water I have not written, but you also require a water so that this whole reaction should be of 50 microliter. Uh, so, uh, the, as far as the template is concerned uh, that template can be vary the amount of template what you are going to add. So, it could be in the 1 picogram to 1 nanograms for the viral or the short templates, whereas it could be in the 1 nanogram to 1 microgram for the genomic DNA. Remember that the genomic DNA is a 
large DNA, right? So if you are uh, and uh, poly and the PCR is always been depends on the number of molecules. It does not depend on the number microgram of the things right so number of molecules because it is going to amplify based on the number of molecules for example if you started with the 10 molecules then it will going after first cycle it is going to be 20 after second cycle it is going to be 40 and so on so it does not depend on the micrograms it, it does not multiply the 10 microgram to 20 microgram to 40 microgram to 80 microgram it multiplies to the number of molecule and that's why it is important that you should take the molecule the larger amount because of the larger size of the genomic dna compared to the viral or the short templates so it is uh, you know depends on the um, the moles of that particular uh, template dna and that's why you see the such a huge difference in terms of the amount of dna what you are going to use if the dna is small or the dna is large uh, apart from that, you also require the primers. So, you require the two primers, one is the forward primer and other one is the reverse primer and the concentration what you require is 0.1 to 0.5 micromoles of the each primer. Then you require the magnesium chloride and magnesium chloride will be 1.5 to 2 millimolar which is optimal for the tagged DNA polymerase. Magnesium chloride is optional, it is not uh, required or it is not uh, something which is compulsory because for example, if you use the PFU uh, DNA polymerase, uh, then uh, magnesium chloride may or may not be required. Then uh, we also require the DNTP, so typical concentration of the DNTP is 200 micromolar of each DNTP which means you are going to require the DATP, you require the DCTP, uh, you require the DTTP uh, and then you also require the D. GTP right these are the four nucleotide what is present in the uh, into the DNA and that is what you require. Uh, then you require the uh, polymerase uh, you can use the tag DNA polymerase or you can use the PFU. Uh, so tag DNA polymerase you require into the range of 0.5 to 2 units per 50 microliter reactions if you go to other reactions then you are going to require the more amount of DNA the, the tag DNA polymerase and then you also require the water and as well as the a polymerase uh, uh, buffer also. Now, one of the most crucial component in this whole reaction is the primers, right? The better you uh, and remember that when we were discussing about the troubleshooting, uh, we gave you the many types of uh, excuses, many types of options how you can be able to improve the product and as well as the accuracy of amplification. And one of the major uh, uh, reason why you are getting the non-specific uh, amplification or why you are getting the no amplification is because you have designed the primers which are not correct or you have designed the primer which are not serving the purpose of uh, working as the template or working as attachment point because remember what is the job of the primer. Primer for example, if this is the uh, 5 prime to uh, 3 prime right. And if you add a primer, right, because you remember that the DNA polymerase has a limitation that it cannot start the uh, DNA synthesis from the nascent DNA. It cannot start from the just by looking at the nucleotide. It requires the uh, some kind of attachment point and that is why you require a primer. So, if you add a primer which is, so then it is going to bind as per the, you know, the uh, Watson Crick base pairing uh, information, right? For example, if you have A here, then it is going to be T here and so on. So, and then this last nucleotide is actually going to provide a starting point for the DNA polymerase, and that is how the DNA polymerase will come sit here and it will going to start synthesis of the DNA, right? Uh, so, if the primers are not good, they are sitting in a very random fashion, like if they are sitting somewhere here or if they are sitting somewhere here or if they are not sitting at all onto the target DNA, they are sitting onto somewhere else. So, for example, if you have another DNA and it may be sitting somewhere here, then uh, it may be initiate the synthesis of that DNA because tag DNA polymerase does not know which DNA it is supposed to synthesize. So, in that case, it only goes to know that wherever I will find the attachment point, wherever I will find the binding of the primer, I will, in, I will extend that particular DNA. So, that is why the accuracy and the primer of the DNA or the primer what you are going to design 
is the most crucial component of the polymerase chain reactions and that is why we are in we are going to discuss in detail about how you can be able to design the primers and how you can be overcome these kind of limitations. So, as far as the primer is concerned, primer is a short DNA stretch that serve as a starting point for the DNA synthesis. In PCR, the two primers are required to bind to the each of the single standard DNA. Uh, you will obtain that after by denaturation flanking the target sequence. These are called forward primer and the reverse primer. They are the pre primer are sequence complementary to the sequence in the template DNA where they are supposed to start the synthesis. Remember that the in the PCR, the primers are DNA, uh, uh, primers are the uh, made up of, of the DNA, right. So, they are actually uh, deoxyribonucleic acid. Whereas, in the case of the DNA replication, uh, they are you have already seen that we are actually going to use the primers which is being synthesized by the primase, it is actually RNA. So, that is very, very different because in that case, you actually have the machinery which actually is going to remove the RNA and it is actually going to be replaced by a short stretch of DNA by the some kind of uh, en enzymatic system, right. But here you do not have that and that is why you are actually going to put the DNA, single standard DNA as the uh, as the primer right and you require the two primers forward primer and the reverse primer. Forward primer is for the synthesis of the leading strand or reverse strand for the reverse primer for the synthesis of the lagging strand. Although I have said in the previous lecture also and I am going to clarify today also that there is no leading and lagging strand because there is no delay in the synthesis of the uh, one strand versus another strand. It is actually going to start simultaneously, right. Suppose you have the, the DNA, right. Once you are actually going to have the denaturation, it is actually going to have the two different independent templates and that is how you are going to have the independent binding of the forward primers, binding of the reverse primer and that is how it is actually going to do the synthesis of both the strands simultaneously. Just for the sake of uh, making it uh, analogy with the DNA replication, I am using the term as leading and the lagging strand, but there is no leading strand, there is no lagging strand in the case of PCR. Now, as I said in the beginning also that the primer designing and the, the quality of the primer is very, very important and that is why there is a set rule and a set guidelines how you can be able to use the primers or how you can be able to use those guidelines for designing the primers. Primers, uh, so first is uh, what is the length of the primer. So, oligonucleotide between 18 to 25 bases is an ideal length which is long enough for the adequate specificity and short enough for a primer to bind easily to template at the annealing temperature. This means 18 to 22, 24 is the ideal length. If you go little shorter to this, then the DNA will not going to bind to the specific site. It is actually going to lose its specificity because that small stretch of DNA probably will find a complementary DNA uh, into the multiple places, right. For example, uh, it may actually be, you know, 4 nucleotides. Suppose you make a primer of 10 nucleotides, right. If you make a primer of 10 nucleotide, then that 10 nucleotide by chance could be present in any part of the genome and that is how it is actually going to compromise the specificity. So, that is why it has to be a certain length. So, that uh, that particular complete stretch may be unique for that particular stretch of DNA, but it may not vary to other side. Now, the other question is if you make the very long DNA, right, if you make a very long uh, primer, then the primer will actually going to have the many kind of problems, right. It may have the uh, secondary structures uh, in within the primer then uh, and it may also have the problem of giving you the non-specific amplifications because uh, very big like long, like for example, if I make a primer of 50 base pair, then I uh, I am actually you know giving more sequence and I am giving the uh, that particular type of uh, sequence which are not required. 
so that those additional sequence additional base pairs are actually going to form the different types of secondary structures and uh, the secondary structure could be uh, problematic in terms of uh, allowing the primer to anneal. The second point is that this uh, long stretch of uh, DNA uh, may be actually uh, finding difficulty in annealing, annealing very uh, you know precisely to that template. For example, it may anneal like this, for example, it may anneal like this right. So, some of the DNA is finding the complementity, the other strand is finding the difficult to anneal by the time it uh, actually finding the you know the complementity this portion has already been annealed right. So, uh, or other example is that it may actually anneal here a small stretch and the rest is leaving like this and then it goes although it has the complementity here, but the kinetics of uh, binding of this region is slightly faster than kinetics of this and that is why it may not get chance to bind and then this portion also has a faster kinetics. So, it actually goes and bind. So, that is how you are going to have this kind of uh, you know loop or hairpins and that may or also going to affect. The other point is also the cost right because this is actually going to increase the cost because if you are designing a primer of 50 base pair. So, it because the primers are actually going to be synthesized under the in vitro DNA synthesis reactions and that is going to be supplied by a commercial vendor. So, if you are unnecessarily putting another 26 uh, base pair then you are supposed to pay for those uh, synthesis and the, you are supposed to pay for those primers. That is the second point is uh, about the primer melting temperature. So, primer with the melting temperature in the range of 50 2 to 58 degrees Celsius generally give the best result. The GC content of the sequence gives a fair indication of a primer TM. The two primers should be prepared in such a way that the TM difference should not be more than 2 degree otherwise it will give you the poor annealing efficiency. So, primer first point is going to take care of the annealing right first point is going to take care about the complementary and it is going to be good for. Uh, but second point is very very important. The so, second point is that if you are going to have the annealing temperature in the range of 50 to you know 52 to 58, then when you are going to lower down the temperature, the, the primer will have the better affinity and it is going to anneal right. And that you can actually be able to achieve by keeping the very uh, significant amount of the GC content. I will discuss in detail why you are supposed to have the GC content because the GC content is also very important in providing the stability to that interaction because the, you know that the G is interacting with the C in, with the 3 hydrogen bonding and it is stronger uh, compared to the AT interactions right. So, AT is having 2 hydrogen bonding. And then uh, you can actually be able to calculate the melting temperature. So, there are two formulas uh, if you are having a primer length which is less than uh, uh, 14 then you can use the T m formula of this like 4 degree into number of G and C in the T m in the primers plus 2 into number of A and T in the primer. But if it is length more than 13 nucleotide then you can use the this formula for calculating the T m values. Now, the third point is about the primer annealing temperature. So, you require the two uh, parameters one is primer annealing melting temperature and another one is the primer annealing temperature. So, too high T A will produce the insufficient primer tabular hybridization result in the lower PCR product yield whereas, the too low will lead to the non-specific product caused by a higher efficiency of base pair. And how you are going to calculate the primer annealing temperature? So, you can actually be able to calculate using this particular formula and uh, Tm for uh, where the Tm is the primer is the melting temperature of the primers and Tm of the product is the melting temperature of the product right. Product means that uh, the synthesized product right. So, the synthesized DNA because the synthesized DNA is also going to have the affinity for the template right. So, that also you can be able to calculate the melting temperature for them. So, you can calculate the melting temperature for the primers, you can calculate the melting temperature for the product and then you put it into this particular uh, equation and it is actually going to give you the annealing temperature for the primers. 
Then the fourth point uh, is very, very important. Then you are supposed to have the GC content. The number of Gs and Cs in the primer as a, uh, should be in the range of 40 to 60 base pair. And the GC content is very important because it is actually as I said you know in the previous uh, slide itself that G is making a base pair with C with the 3 hydrogen bonding compared to the A to T because T A to T is always responsible for having the 2 hydrogen bonding. So, because of it is strong, the binding of the primer to the template is going to be strong, right? It is going to be very strong and that is how it will allow the DNA polymerase to go and sit and do a efficient uh, pr synthesis. It is going to give you the efficient initiation and once the initiation start, then there will be no doubt that you are going to get a PCR product. But if this is very weak, for example, if you have lot of AT and G, uh, those kind of sequences, then what will happen is that the primer will be binding, primer will still be binding because the two base pairs are still good enough, right? But they are not good enough, right? They are not efficient, they are not going to provide the efficient initiation and because of that the primer RNA polymerase uh, or DNA polymerase may start, but it may take time because it has to sit on this double stranded DNA and then it has to actually extend this strand, right. So, this for this reason only it has to be a GC content. Now, apart from that you also should have the GC clamp, right. So, it is not important that you should have a GC content, you also should have that the corner and the corner you should have the G, G and C kind of sequences. So, that the corner should be intact, okay. Even if this region is not having the lower affinity, it does not matter because this portion can be taken care. But if the lower, if this is stretch like the corner of the DNA is also coming off, right, it is because of the lower affinity or some other reason, then it is will be a problem. So, that is why you should have a GC clamp on the corner. And as the GC forms a strong bond with then the AT, the number of GC content at the 3 prime end of the primer should not be more than 3, otherwise it will result in a non-specific uh, binding at the region where the G and C are abundant. So, uh, so this, is, this is very important that, uh, uh, that you should have a, a, a GC uh, uh, clamp to hold the primers. And then uh, we have uh, you are supposed to design the primer. So, I have taken an example of uh, this uh, you know. So, for example, if this is your gene for which you are going to have the uh, amplification right or you want to design an amplification. So, uh, apart from the GC content uh, you are supposed to have the uh, you are not supposed to have a GC clamp for example. So, if you have a primer where you have the uh, you know the G, G, G like that sequences at the corner, then it is actually going to have the problem because it may actually flip onto this and it actually can make a loop like this. So, it is going to form a clamp. So, as the GC forms a stronger bond than the AT, the number of GC content at the 3 prime end of the primer should not be more than 3, otherwise it will result in a non-specific tight binding at the region where the GC are abundant. So, this is very important that you should not have the GC clamp, you should have not have the more than 3 nucleotides at the corner because otherwise the binding is going to be very strong and it will result into the non-specific tight binding at the region where the GC are abundant, which means it is actually going to guide the binding of the primer uh, into any sequence where you have this complementary sequence. And in so, because this sequence does not match, this sequence is not matching with this, but this sequence is matching. And because it is at the corner, uh, it will allow the primer to go and sit. So, this is a non-specific template, this is not a uh, specific template, but it will still be get amplified and that is how you are going to have the non-specific amplifications. Now, uh, let us uh, take an example of this double standard DNA. So, this is the double standard DNA which you are interested to do a PCR. Now, what we are supposed to design a forward primer and you are supposed to design a reverse primer. When you want to design the primer, what you require is you require an information about the restriction enzyme because most of these uh, primers are going to use for 
cloning purposes. So, uh, when you design the primer, you are also going to ask a question whether I want the primer for sequencing purpose, right. Remember when we were discussing about the Maxim Gilbert method, uh, uh, we are saying that you can actually be able to use the primer, right. That is how you can be actually, uh, you know, design the four different types of reactions, A reaction, G reaction, C reaction and D reactions and so on. So, whether you are designing a primer for the sequencing purpose or whether you are designing a primer for the cloning purpose, 90 percent people are designing a primer for the cloning purpose. So, if you are requiring, uh, if you are designing a primer for sequencing purpose, then the requirements are different, then you do not require the restriction enzyme, but for the cloning you require following things, you require a restriction enzyme because this is the restriction enzyme what you are going to use for cutting the uh, fragment and then you are getting going to paste it into the, your vector of interest. So, you require uh, the information of the restriction enzymes, then you also require the, uh, the you know the sequence information, sequence of the template right and as I said you know that is the one of the limitation of the PCR. So, for example, this is the stretch of DNA and I want to clone this into PET 23A, okay. This is just an arbitrary example, it could be any other vector. So, it could be one of the vector which is where I will be interested to, to clone this, right. Now, the first thing what I have to see is I have to go through with the PET 23A multiple cloning sites and I have to look for the restriction enzyme what I suppose to use, right restriction enzyme what I can use, right. So, I will have a list of restriction enzyme which are present in the MCS and then I have to also look at the sequence of my template, right and I have to list out the non-cutters, right. Those restriction enzyme which are not cutting the sequence, right and then I can use non-cutters from this list and then I can choose the enzyme. So, for example, in this case I have chosen that I will use the BAMH1 uh, for the fiber primer and I will use the XHO because looking at the MCS you will be able to know which one which enzyme is in the front and which enzyme is on the 3 prime end. So, I can use the BAMH1 in the 5 prime end and I can use the XHO in the 3 prime end. So, okay. so, this means the gene is going to be placed between the BAMH1 and the XHO1, okay. So, this is your DNA, this is the DNA, you are going to have the restriction enzyme in the front, you are going to have restriction enzyme in the bottom. So, that when you are going to digest this with BAMH1 versus XHO, you are going to have the BAMH1 site here. XHO site here and then you are going to have the similar kind of cutting for the vector also and that is how it is actually go and insert into the vector. Now, for this what you require is you are going to have the simple thing, okay. What you can just do for forward primer is not an issue. Forward primer what you have to do is you have to just take the 3 prime end whatever the sequence you require. So, you can take the uh, 15 to 20 nucleotides from the 3 prime end right you can just take the in fact you what you can do is you can just take the 5 prime end okay and then you can just add the so you can take the 5 from the 5 prime end okay and then you put the restriction enzyme in the front okay now this is your primer ready this is your forward primer ready okay and you can write the name you can just give some name like f1 f1 or you can say f1 x gene like that okay because it's important that you should give the better name so that you should be able to rec uh, you know get this primer uh, at at a uh, later point and then for the reverse primer what you're going to do is you're going to generate the 5 prime end of this so you're going to write the 5 prime end of this and you're going to write the 3 prime end to this and you are going to write the complementary sequence to this and then you are going to do the same. You are going to put the restriction enzyme, here you are going to put the restriction enzyme 1 that is the BAMH1 and the other one you are going to use the restriction enzyme 2. And uh, you can finally, you, what you are going to do is you are going to do a lot of quality testing, you are going to look at whether the primers are annealing with each other or not, whether there is a primer dimer is forming or not and so on. 
So, all these uh, I have uh, done or we have done it uh, in, a, in a demo video. So, that it, the students are actually going to explain you how you can be able to do the design primer manual method and as well as the uh, software based methods because there are so many softwares available where you are just going to put your gene and they will actually going to give you the uh, you know the uh, simple examples of the these are the pot potential forward primer and potential reverse primers. So, you can get the uh, readily you can get the sequences. So, for designing primers first you have to identify the region of interest your region of interest which you want to amplify from any vector or any sequence. So, in second step you have to identify non cutters there are various softwares available but we can use new england biolabs neb uh, cutter version 2.0 after identifying non cutters you have to select a suitable vector in which you want to integrate this amplified region and uh, suitable restriction sites you will get suitable restriction sites from non cutters after that you can go for uh, designing forward primer so for for understanding purpose i gave this sequence so i am using this sequence i will uh, use this sequence to design the primers and analyze the primers so this is the whole sequence but i don't want to amplify uh, whole region i want to amplify the letters uh, the sequence which is highlighted in green so i want to amplify starting from here to here so now the question arises what are the non cutters so you want to amplify this region and integrate into another vector for that you have to identify which are non cutting restriction enzymes so what i will do i will copy this sequence into uh, nab cutter and identify what are the non cutters so I just copy the sequence and paste here and I will ask submit so it will analyze the sequence and give non cutter these are the enzymes cutting inside the sequence but we are interested in which are non cutters so that means you can see here non cutters so just click here it will give uh, number of enzymes which will non or uh, not cut inside the sequence so once getting this list we have to identify in which vector you want to uh, integrate your amplified region so for that purpose so i have selected for easy of understanding i have selected pet 23a vector so you can see this is the vector map so uh, this is the 5 prime side this is the 3 prime side so, n terminal and this is the c terminal side n terminal means forward primer c terminal means reverse primer so i can use bam h1 in forward primer and xh1 in reverse primer this is the detailed map so i have identified two restriction enzymes that is BAM H1 and XH1. So, I can use these enzymes in forward primer and reverse primer. So, after identifying restriction enzymes and uh, the vector, we will go for designing forward primer. So, I will take this sequence. I want to amplify from here to here. So, I will copy this sequence here. So, for designing forward primer, it is very easy. You have to take the sequence, whatever you are getting, up to 15 to 20 bases, you can take as it is. So, 
if you want to insert a restriction in game suppose i want to insert a restriction in game this is the um, sequence as it is given from this um, this whole sequence so i want to insert a restriction in game that is bomb h1 so this is the uh, sequence for bomb h1 here it cuts so i can use this sequence here so this is the this is our restriction enzyme here it will cut so we cannot uh, simply queue like this so there should be some more bases extra bases we have to add in the five prime side so i will use uh, so this sequence i will use so now this is five prime to three prime side so this is uh, our forward primer is ready so after designing this forward primer we have to analyze this sequence so this primer so what i will do is i just copy this sequence and i will use aligo analyzer software which is uh, specially designed for this purpose only i will paste the sequence just ask analyze so here also you can see there are uh, so many options are there like you can analyze hairpin loop self dimer hetero dimer so uh, these are the general details what is the length and uh, gc content melting temperature uh, molecular weight so these are normal details i will go for hairpin loop is there any hairpin loops so we can see there are uh, number of hairpin loops uh, we can see different different uh, structures predicted by the software so if you want to explore this thing you can explore only two bases two bases it is forming and uh, the delta g value is minus 0.43 kilocalorie per mole so this is fine up to uh, minus 10 kilocalorie per mole is fine uh, those uh, hairpin loops broken uh, during the uh, during the uh, amplification process but above that above minus 10 kilocalorie per mole cannot be broken so in that case what we will do uh, either we redesign the primers or uh, we will add uh, 5 percent uh, 1 percentage b10 or 5 percentage dmso these are uh, these chemicals disrupt the these loops so that uh, the amplification will be uh, fine so next i will analyze for uh, self dimer is there any self dimers uh, and what is the maximum delta g so this is uh, this is forming continuously five bases it is because of the restriction sites so those are uh, restriction site those homodimers forming due to restriction site can be broken there is no issue but other than that this is also because of uh, uh, restriction site but other than that we have to look carefully so is there any continuously four or five bases forming this uh, homodimer then it is very difficult these interactions can be broken easily so here uh, some of the uh, consecutive base pairs as there these are very weak interactions so they can be broken so other than that uh, there is no significant um, self dimers so this sequence can be used and uh, for heterodimer predicting heterodimer 
you need a complementary sequence with the uh, uh, reverse prime like reverse primer you need so that we will discuss later on so we got our forward primer here so it is very easy uh, to uh, generate forward primer but in case of reverse primer it is somewhat difficult because not in terms of uh, um, predicting things it is somewhat uh, tricky so what i'm saying is here we have sequence so in case of forward primer we just take an as t sequence 15 to 20 basis as t is from sequence it but here we have to take complementary sequence not uh, uh, 3 prime to 5 prime or 5 prime to 3 prime sequence we have to take complementary to this one say this is the sequence we got from here so what is the complementary to this one so just i will i will add here So this is the complementary to uh, this particular sequence. So as you can see, this is uh, we have to keep from this direction five prime to three prime. So I will take like this. So what we have to do is we want to insert a restriction site here. So we can insert a restriction site here uh, directly. So in uh, reverse primer we wanted to insert XH1 site. So, So this is the restriction site. As usual, we can use. Uh, we have to insert T here. So uh, this is the restriction site uh, we added. We can add flanking regions in between uh, flanking bases. Uh, before this uh, restriction site so now we got our uh, reverse primer so we have to go through same procedure like what I have shown in in case of forward uh, fire primer so just I will copy paste here and analyze the reverse primer so is there any hairpin loops only one hairpin loop that is within the range of delta g so there is no issue and uh, self dimer so we can see here continuously four bases are forming in this case we have to either 
either uh, change the sequence uh, or uh, remove the some of the bases we can ignore uh, those restriction um, those dimers farming through restriction site so next heterodimer we have to analyze for hetero heterodimer we need uh, forward primer just copy paste here and calculate it will give is there any uh, heterodimers this is because of uh, restriction site this is also because of restriction site this can be broken those which are um, at the end of the sequence they can be broken but uh, which is in middle if you, uh, the those bases are middle it is very hard to uh, disrupt those interactions and uh, our amplification will be not good so there is no amplification literally other kind of interactions will be broken easily these are weak interactions so this is how we can prepare uh, design the primers and analyze the primers we have done all these processes for designing uh, forward and reverse primers but instead of doing manually we can do it online we just have to submit the sequence and it will return return the uh, forward and reverse primers these are some of the tools available online for freely but there are commercial tools also available like algo 7 vector nta primer Premier. so if you interested in these softwares you can just go through these sites and submit your sequence uh, you will get your uh, primers in this video we showed you how to uh, design forward and the reverse primers and uh, how to analyze for non-cutters and what are the restriction sites we can use based on non-cutters and uh, uh, how to integrate uh, our amplified product in which regions uh, like we have to observe the vector if we want to integrate our gene of interest so hope uh, this will help you to advance your work now once you design the primer right so once after this demo probably you will be able to design the primer on your own and you can be able to test these primers under the in silico pcr so you can actually be able to do that by using the some of the in silico tools what are available onto the web so i hope uh, you could have been understood the process now let's uh, think about the what could go wrong and what are the different problems what you are going to face so one of the primer uh, one of the major problem what you are going to face is the primer secondary structures uh, so primer secondary structure arise as a result of intra or intramolecular attraction between the primer or the other primer which eventually reduce the yield or amplification at the availability of single standard primer will be limited to the pcr the various types of primer secondary structure are as follows for example you can have hairpins you can have dimers you can have repeats and the runs so hairpins are the loop structure formed by the intramolecular interaction within the primers optimally a 3 prime end primer with a hairpin with a delta g of minus 2 kilocalorie and an internal hairpin with a delta g of minus 3 kilocalorie per mole is tolerated generally then we have a dimer a primer dimer is a structure formed from the double standard like structure which is formed by the intermolecular interaction between the two primer if the interaction is formed between the two homologous or same sense primer it is called as self dimer 
whereas if the interaction is formed between the two different primer then it is called as cross dimers. Optimally a 3 prime end self dimer with a delta G of minus 5 kilocalorie per mole and an internal self dimer with a delta G of minus 6 kilocalorie is tolerated generally right. So, dimer is going to be formed between the two primer for example, this is a forward primer and this is going to be a reverse primer. So, they may actually have a complementity between them and they may actually have uh, uh, like binding like this. So, they may have a binding like this, they can have multiple options like uh, you, they can have a binding like this and so on. So, this is the small stretch if it is having a small stretch and in, in, if it is a having a delta G in the range of minus 5 calorie to minus 6 calories then it can be broken down when you are going to have a very high temperature. But if it is a very tight binding and if it is having the, uh, so this is this is the primer dimers between the dim primers. It could be also that forward primer itself is binding to the forward primer. For example, you can have a forward primer binding to another forward primer because you have some sequence which is complementary to each other or you can have like this, you right, can have complete binding right in, in the middle actually and so on. So, this is uh, can be well tolerated also if you have uh, you know the bind the delta G in the range of 5 to 6. Uh, then you also have the repeats and runs. So, repeats are the consecutive occurrence of dinucleotide whereas runs are continuous stitches of single nucleotide. A maximum number of repeat and run accepted is the 4 dinucleotide and the 4 base pair respectively. So, repeat and runs are also going to have the similar kind of problem that they are actually going to create the uh, hairpins and all those kind of problems. Then you can have the primer template homology. The primer should be designed in such a way that there should be no homologous within the template other than the target side. This will result in a non-specific binding and the amplification. So, this is just a few examples of the primer secondary structures. So, you can have the for example, if this I have synthesized a forward primer and I have synthesized a reverse primer and this is the primer sequences. So, then I have to analyze them whether they are forming the loops or hairpins and those kind of er uh, errors. So, for example, in this case what you see here is this is the actually the hairpin what is being formed and it is very strong because uh, it has been bound by the two different interactions. So, this is the GC interactions and this is the AT interaction and that is very very problematic because and in if you want to have this and why it is happening because it has a very strong uh, you know the intermolecular primer dimer formations right. So, if I have this and you will see the delta G, delta G is in the range of 9.47 which is above to the 0.6 the number above to the 6 right. This means this is cannot be broken down, this is very very strong, it cannot be broken down even if you have increased the temperature. So, in that case I have an option of either using the some other stretch of the uh, uh, of the template DNA or I have to modify the primers. For example, I have modified the primer and then now I have broken down that and what you see here is delta G is still you know in the range of minus 2 right. So, it is still there is a interaction, it is still there is a uh, 3 nucleotide what is binding to the corresponding uh, you know the templates, but this is well tolerated, this is going to be interaction, this is going to be bind and this, this kind of interaction you do not have to worry about. So, this is the way you supposed to you know vary the, temp, uh, the you are supposed to analyze the primer sequences, you are supposed to check for these kind of things and there are software available, there are software available for doing this and that is how you can be able to do the primer designing and other things. So, uh, this is all about the technical aspects what we have discussed, we have discussed about the primer designing or what kind of troubleshooting you are supposed to do and what other how it is actually going to impact the PCR amplifications and other things. So, with this I would like to conclude my lecture here in our subsequent lecture we are going to discuss some more aspects related to molecular biology. Thank you.